Let's take another slightly more elaborate example. We'll call it the walking dog example. In this example, we'll say that over a period of time, let's say t in seconds, we have x plot up here in meters. And we'll say that our graph is such that the object started out here, headed to the origin, and if it keeps on going, it should keep going like so. We call this the walking dog example because if we were to simply draw a number line, and indicate where this object is. We might have our origin there. At time t equals zero seconds, the object's at four meters. So here's Fido. At Time t equals three seconds. Fido's made it over to the origin. And by the time we get to time t equals six seconds, Fido's made it over to the other side of the origin. So we call it the walking dog example because it indicates something that's started out if you're sitting at the origin, something that's starting out on the positive side is walking toward you and keeps on going. Just a straight linear, what's called linear motion. Now we could ask how fast it's going. And that's somewhat simple to calculate. If we look at the slope of this line here, In that span of time, three seconds, the dog has managed to go a distance delta x of minus four meters. Notice they put a minus sign there because it started at four meters and went down to zero. So the average speed here. which is delta x over delta t is minus 4 meters over 3 seconds or minus 4 thirds meters per second. Now it happens to be true that this is equal to the instantaneous speed at any point along this graph because the speed is constant all the way through. It didn't matter that I measured it right there it could also be the speed right there or right there. So I could pick, have picked any time interval if I had graphed what is its speed. This speed or this velocity would have been a simple number all the way through. It would be minus four thirds. velocity is measured in meters per second.